All right, ladies and gentlemen, you already know who it is with the poor lighting and everything else. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we're, we're, we're going to be talking about and taking a look here at the reveal trailer for Sephiroth in Smash Brothers, which is really insane, to say the least. So I'm going to get into the specific details of like what it kind of means for development and stuff like that later. We're going to look at the reveal trailer now. Then we're going to talk about what it means. I've already seen it. I saw it live. So, this is just kind of like a secondhand, not really reaction. Okay, so they're fighting, I forgot its name, um, Galim, something like that. My water bottle. It's cut in half. All the master hands disappear. One winged angel starts playing. And we have Japanese Cloud and Sephiroth. <laughs> Sephiroth descends to battle. Alright, so the gameplay stuff I want to do watch in a kind of small or slower, slower stuff here. So this right here is just like remade of, um, uh, like this isn't actual gameplay, it's just effect. That's his in-game model, but the fire is just effect stuff. So this is him on the stage where you fight Ganon. Okay, so that's probably F-Tilt. Looks like he hit Dark Samus. Oh, Snake. And that thing is wide. And then he hits Mar- that's, that looked like an F-Smash over there. Here he jumps and then tilts himself on the wall. And then is able to jump up. He's got a counter. And, okay, so I was going to say he splits the stage in half. I made a video with that meme, but it doesn't actually look like he did, because Midgar has one of those things where the stage will split in half, uh, so this actually already looks like that it was in the process of being split, and, and this Sephiroth was pineappled, stuck underneath the stage, and then just did up air to make it look like he split it in half. I highly doubt he did that. So that looks like a taunt or idle animation. That looks like some sort of like B or standard B thing. He was able to, to put these phantoms around his opponent. And then up smash is huge. Link shot an arrow, which I think hit one of those phantoms. That or either a timer went off and the phantoms hit Link. And then this is the stage, kind of like a Kalos setup here. Which is, and this is the destruction area that is happening to not Midgar, but the planet. I forgot what it's called. Um, uh, Gaia. Uh, to Gaia at the end of Final Fantasy VII slash VII Remake, um, when the whole world is being destroyed um, in both games. Uh, this is just kind of like the, the time and process of when that's happening. And then that's just him walking into a dark void. Down air is probably down air or down B uh, with that stabby thing. He dodges all those hits except Terry's and Krom's. He gets hits there. But he's able to... What did he do? Sidestep? Was it dodge roll? What was it? Because he was still facing them the whole time. Okay, he jumped, roll, and then got hit. Able to, okay, so he's got this thing similar to Limit. Where he becomes the one-winged angel. <laughs> Looks like crit damage. Side B. 
something like that. And then that's probably Final Smash, him get, locking them into Final Smash. Or maybe that was like Standard B or something with his limit, I don't know. But this does seem to be more specifically based on um, 7 Remake. And I'll get into why after the, the trailer. So yeah, he chops Mario. Cloud comes in and saves him. Yeah. And then Cloud hits him with Omni Slash version 5, which I don't remember being in Smash. Like, this looks different. So maybe they're going to update Cloud a little bit too. I don't. Could just be magic of digital editing, is probably what it is. And then, so this right here, he's like, You're just a memory to me. And then, so here we get a look of his final smash. Which is his second to last form in Final Fantasy VII. So, that seems to be it. Um, let's look at the Smash Fighters website. See if uh, anything about Sephiroth was posted here yet. Oh, yeah, we got his render coming out this month, too, which is another thing. Yeah, that render looks clean. Oh, change costume. Okay. Ooh. All right. A green one. Do we have access to all eight? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. And then I want to know what the difference is. Let's see if, like, the hilt on his, his pants, the hilt on his thing. Okay, and his pants change color, too. So, all right. So, dang, that is really cool. Um, let's take a look at these screenshots. Disproportional, of course. Let's see if uh, I could fix that going into it. No, okay. That's kind of weird. Does this fix them? No. Hmm. Screen Screenshots are kind of warped, but... So here we have Ness, Bowser, and Robin versus Sephiroth. So I feel like Ness is a reference to, like... Uh, well, not... I was about to say Ness is a reference to Earthbound. Uh, but this looks like a very similar setup to, to how Earthbound would play, um, even Undertale 2, even though Undertale isn't a party, party-based party RPG, um, and Final Fantasy. Um, you kind of, I mean, I would say it could be like Cloud and, you know, Barrett and Tifa, but none of these characters match those descriptions, and Cloud isn't there either. Um, so this is just really, really funny um, that it's Sephiroth. Uh, so let's look back, actually, at the DLC, if we can. Home. And then fighters. Oh, actually, I want to see if he's on the banner. We're going to get a Sakurai Presents uh, thing later this month as well. Um, which, to be honest, kind of... Ooh, he's right next to Cloud. That's really cool. Which, to be honest, to me, kind of feels like it has to be next week. Because the week after that's Christmas, and the week after that is New Year's. And I don't think... I mean, especially with Japan, I don't think anyone wants to be doing work between that week of Christmas and New Year's. So it kind of feels like it's going to have to be next week. Um, I could I could totally be wrong, but... Uh, so Fighters, let's actually... I, I want to look at the DLC Fighters. Um, yeah, these right here. <sighs> okay, so Plant, Joker, Hero, Banjo, Terry, Byleth, Min Min, Steve, and Sephiroth. Really, really bizarre. So, first of all, uh, Sephiroth is from Final Fantasy VII, uh, within the Final Fantasy VII series, uh, which is owned by Square Enix. So now we have a total of three Square Enix characters, being Cloud, um, Hero, and Sephiroth. So I've pointed this out before, um, and I don't want to be like, oh, uh, this, this is like, out of all the theories and stuff that I've posted, the one that I'm about to say is like one of like the really like, Jacob, that's stupid kind of deal. Um, 
So, but, out of the majority of third parties, a lot of them have exactly three characters. <laughs> Which means that they should fulfill that role. This sounds really stupid. They should fulfill that role by giving third party companies uh, characters to fit three, to, 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 to make three. So, uh, to look specifically, um, we have, uh, I think Konami is actually the only one we don't have more than one of. Um, Sonic has, Sega has three. Bayonetta, Joker, and Sonic. Um, I can't think for Konami. Um, uh, Bandai Namco only has two, I think? Pac-Man, and I forgot who else, because Capcom is... Oh, wait, no, Konami is also the, the Castlevanias. Yeah, so Snake and the Belmonts for Konami. For Konami. Capcom is Mega Man, um, Ryu, and Ken. Bandai Namco is Pac-Man. And honestly, I think that might be it. Pac-Man. Man, I feel, like, so stupid right now, because I used to know this all by heart. Um... And then Microsoft has uh, Steve and uh, Banjo, so they have two. And then, of course, Square Enix went from one to three within two series of DLC, which is insane to think about because of how stingy we all make Square Enix out to be. So, uh, so yeah, fi Final Fantasy out of the way, just basic stuff. Final Fantasy is a character, or Sephiroth from Final Fantasy is a character. Great, cool. Um... Yeah, his moveset looked really, really cool. I mean, he's obviously going to be a long, a long-ranged swordsman. He's probably going to have a. Lo I mean, like, because Sephiroth's whole thing is that he's he's fast, right? Um, even though he's not like physically fast, it's more his sword that is. Um, so he's probably going to be a lot like a heavyweight, but maybe like a little bit more than midweight um, character. His moves are going to come out really quickly, but he himself is probably going to be relatively slow. Um, and then here's the other thing, too, is Cloud's really good. Cloud's recovery kind of sucks without limit. Um, I mean, not kind of sucks. It just does suck without limit. So you know, the, other, the other thing, too, is is, is Sephiroth going to have a good recovery? He's got a counter, which is insane. Um, so just just Sephiroth. Yeah, just, just Sephiroth. Uh, the other thing is I was looking here at the DLC, not yesterday, but the day before, and I noticed a pattern. This is this is the new this is the new hot theory for for character confirmations. So here we go. Plant Joker Hero, Banjo Terry Byleth, Min Min, Steven Alex, and Sephiroth. First party, third party, first party. Third, third, third. Third, second, but it's still in-house. Second party, third party. So first, third, first, third, third, third. Third, first, third. First, third, first. Third, third, third. Third, first, third. Which means our next one is also going to be third party. Our next one's also going to be third party. And then the one after that is going to be first party. So the next two characters, obviously confirmed. This is super official. It's obvious. I mean, like, it's right there. You're blind if you don't see it. Delete. Um, <laughs> just something stupid I noticed was that, like, it's kind of like third, first, third. Don't actually buy that. That's the dumbest thing I've ever said. Um, but just something funny. Uh, so Sephiroth. Um, I don't really know what else to really think or say about Sephiroth, to be completely honest. Uh, but this does kind of bring into light, you know, just Smash in general. Nintendo has been really stupid. Uh, as of recently, um, as of tons, just basically tons of controversy and whatnot with the company and their PR moves and stuff that they've been doing. And then they essentially were like, hey, Smash Bros. character. And a lot of people were like, okay, cool, whatever, we sort of forgive you. But no, there's, there's genuine actual issues that need to be addressed with Nintendo and how they treat their consumers, especially online, um, and just when it comes to fans trying to, to, to be fans. Um, so there was the whole Melee thing with uh, the Melee community um, essentially making a way uh, to, for people to play online 
um, which was an incredibly important thing for the Melee competitive scene, since, newsflash, Melee is on a GameCube, which doesn't actually have, like, Wi-Fi internet connection support for you to play Melee online with people, uh, which means that the Melee community is entirely reliant when it comes to just the, the FCG, or the fighting game community, the FGC, um player base for them, uh, completely reliant, reliant on local play, which isn't something that can be done in 2020 just due to COVID and health concerns and everything like that. So this this rollback thing, um, this rollback system was invented for people to, to, to play Melee with rollback online, which is a huge, 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 huge big deal. Uh, Nintendo, or the, um, with that rollback program, there was going to be a tournament that was hosted um, by either the the program was either called Slippy or it was by someone named Slippy. I don't remember the details or both because people do that. Um, and so Nintendo basically gave them a cease and desist and said, no, we're not doing the tournament anymore. Um, stop using our, our stuff. And then they, they, they released an actual PR statement. They were like, this this thing was made and used with um, illegal attained copies of our games, with um, illegal um, emulation and stuff like that, which was all fake, um, or all false, I should say. Um, the games were legally purchased uh, and stuff like that. None of it was uh, illegally stolen or pirated, uh, like Nintendo was claiming there was. And then there was no emulation either. The games weren't being emulated. There was no emulator being ran on the games. There was no use of an emulation whatsoever. Um, uh, it, it was it's, it's a third-party program that was just ported into the game, which is different than emulation. You're not emulating anything. So, if anything, it's modding, which isn't the same thing as emulating. Um, and so, I mean, like aside from their PR statement technically being fa uh, just not not correct, um, cease and desist went through. So they kind of had to shut down the whole thing. And then, like that 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 was stupid, right? That was really dumb. Um, so then the Splatoon community. Uh, decided to hey we have a tournament uh, well let's let's name our our you know top tier players after melee to like hashtag free melee hashtag safe smash and so they did and uh, Nintendo of America decided ah well now because you're supporting melee we are not going to allow you to stream the tournament you'll still have your tournament we just won't stream it which happened um, there were actually some third party companies that stepped in and was like hey we'll we'll stream it for you uh, but Nintendo themselves completely backed out of it. Um, said due to technical errors, but there wasn't anything like that. It was complete BS, complete just uh, under the carpet kind of stuff. Um, then after that, they uh, there were there was this charity funded uh, program uh, by this guy named Captain Alex on Twitter. Um, basically, what he does is he buy he buys Joy Cons and he paints over them, gives them a shell coating, looks real nice um, in the design and in remembrance of of uh, popular internet personality, uh, Etika, who passed away um, last summer, last uh, spring, um, due to mental health and suicide. And so uh, these, um, so Captain Alex makes these, makes these Joy-Cons and sells them, and all the proceeds go to charity. He doesn't make a dime off of it. Uh, well, Nintendo gave him a cease and desist and said, no, stop, you're using our branding, uh, don't do that. And so he technically was, he was, he was drawing the, uh, the Joy-Con logo on the Joy-Cons, um, but they're also hand painted, so technically not every single version that he was painting was the exact same as the logo that, that Nintendo has um, patented. But it doesn't matter. I mean, cease and desist is cease and desist, so that sh that shut down the whole charity thing. He he couldn't he can't sell his his Joy Cons anymore, so he's just got a bunch of Joy Con shells, uh, and he can't do anything with them. Um, so aside from that, then there was this other YouTuber personality um, who would post music of just a bunch of Nintendo games. Over hundreds, we're talking hundreds of his videos and hundreds of other people's videos too, um, that use Nintendo music all got copyright claimed um, and stuff like that. So Nintendo has not been on good terms with people. And to be completely honest, this was done. Uh, the whole like Smash announcement thing, I, I guarantee was done last minute to kind of ma make PR look good. That's probably what it was. And I'm not buying it. Um, like... I support the developers. I support the people, you know, that are paid by Nintendo. I just don't support the people who are paying their employees. I don't support Nintendo's PR. Um, just, I mean, like, this goes against basically everything that Nintendo has previously stood for as a family-friendly company, uh, what um, Awada's vision was for the company. Like, this is all anti-consumer, um, anti-user. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's anti-family, and it's anti-friendly. 
Like it has nothing to do with, uh, with, with, with anything. I mean, like, especially you look at other companies too, like Sega and, you know, you see fan art, you see fan, fan games, you know, that are posted online. Um, now of course, social media accounts ran by companies are different than people inside the companies. I completely understand that. The people who run Nintendo's, um, social media don't know jack crap about you know, Smash Bros. DLC months and weeks before it happens. So, like, the, the, the people who run, like, Sega's account, for example, are super supportive of fan games and stuff. And every now and then, Sega will do a dumb dumb and, like, cease and desist a fan game or something. But never to this extent that Nintendo has kind of gone through in this past month. I mean, like, it's been really, really bad. Especially in the short amount of time that it's happened. Like, over the span of a year, sure. You know, bad year for Nintendo. But no, I mean, Nintendo is going out of 2020 with a bang. It's humiliating. So, and Smash DLC is just one of those things that people are going to look at and be like, okay, cool, we're cool. Um, and it's sad. But uh, I basically wanted to say all that to mean that even though DLC is hype, we can support Sakurai and we can support the Smash team um, while still disagreeing with uh, Nintendo's PR staff with what they've been doing and stuff like that. Um, and, and essentially, yeah, screw Nintendo. <laughs> like, thumbs thumbs up to, to Sora um ltd whatever the name of the company is i forgot what um thumbs up to them and their developing staff and i know that bamkai's or bamco's working on the game so thumbs up to them thank you but uh thumbs down to nintendo you guys suck i'm just being incredibly rude um anti-consumer anti x y and z it's horrible it really sucks um in other news too uh smash amiibo the banjo Banjo Terry and Byleth Amiibos come out in March for Japan, um, 2021, which means that they'll probably release worldwide as well. Um, and another thing to note is that Amiibo aren't region locked, so even if they don't come out in the West, um, you can buy them from Japan retailers or from Japanese retailers, and they, they work perfectly fine. I have a Japanese cloud Amiibo, and it's totally fine. Um, but yeah, Sephiroth, uh, Sep wow. Sephiroth and Smash, really, really cool. Um... Don't know what to think of the rest of the DLC, because we had a first party, two third parties, and before, we had a first party, four third parties, and then boom, second party rep. Don't know what to say about the other three DLC characters. I look forward to them. I already paid for them, so, I mean, you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit, but... Yeah, so, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, look forward to playing Sephiroth later this month, so... Um, let me know what you guys think about Sephiroth as a whole, and, uh, just the whole deal with Nintendo, what you guys are thinking in X, Y, and Z. So, anyway, guys, this is Jake, logging out. Peace.